Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I have a different type of DIY for you guys. It's more on the minimalistic side. So I was walking through HomeSense and was inspired by one of their very natural frames with beautiful picture in it and it had like lettering. And I just thought, you know what? I have bought these floating shelves to go in my craft room. I actually was planning on having some really positive quotes written up on the wall and frames and then like little minimalistic items, some Dollar Tree goodies, of course, and on display. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to make that with some Di with some Dollar Tree items and DIY these. And then I thought, why not share them with you guys? By the way, I mentioned last week about Skillshare and taking some online classes courses with them. I was taking a productivity class and this week I thought I would play around with some of their lettering classes. Have you ta have you heard about Skillshare? If you haven't, they are a huge supporter of this community and thank you so much to Skillshare. They have sponsored this video and have provided two free months for the first 500 subscribers from my channel that follow the link to get two free months. So definitely take a peek. You will not be disappointed. They have a very professional website. They even have an app you can download on your phone and some classes are audible. So you don't even have to watch. You can just listen and you know how that is. Sometimes we're on the go. It's really easy to listen to something harder to watch, of course, especially if you're in the car or traveling or going to after school activities or work or whatever it might be that's happening in your life. But they definitely have some awesome classes Classes. It goes all the way from like design, business, arts and crafts. Well, I was taking productivity classes, which I was really enjoying. And then I thought I'm going to practice my lettering. So I'm taking an, a lettering class right now and hopefully having to um, practice that. I can then transfer that over to some DIYs. It's tricky sometimes when you have to stencil things or use your Cricut machine or cut things out from the internet, especially you know, just using Microsoft Word or something like that. It would be nice to have really nice lettering. So I hope you guys follow the description link down below and go check out Skillshare. They are an amazing supporter of this community. So I just want to say thank you again to Skillshare. And I hope you guys enjoy these very simple, minimalistic DIYs and are able to incorporate them into your home decor. Please feel free to tag me on Instagram or send me any Facebook pictures. I always love seeing what you guys are doing out there as well. So anyways, until next time, enjoy the process of this video. For this first DIY, I'm taking a little wood plaque from the Dollar Tree. Now you can use a piece of recycled wood to do this. And I printed off a black and white image with a laser printer. However, you can get colored pictures printed to do this, or you can even have a photocopied image. You're going to apply a nice generous amount of Mod Podge directly to the face of that image. And then you're going to flip it and lay it on top of the wood that you've chosen. This will do a transfer of Mod Podge and I like to use the saran wrap. This is from the Dollar Tree. I don't like it in the kitchen so I'm, I've taken it to the craft room. Or you can use the back of a gift card or something to transfer it on nice and smooth. Allow it to dry completely. I did let it sit for 24 hours. And then with a sponge or a wet cloth you want to soak the image and start rubbing off that paper. It does look messy and it doesn't look like it's going to transfer, but it does in the end, you'll see it's so nice. It just looks like there's a beautiful print right on that wood piece. Since I printed this image in black and white, I wanted to share with you, this is another option if you don't have a colored laser printer, is you can just take some pencil crayons or markers and shade in your image with the colors that you prefer. Sometimes we do find images and the colors are just not right so this would allow you to print it off as a black and white image and then shade it in with the colors you'd prefer. And here you have a beautifully transferred image that would suit your home decor you can print herbs you can print flowers you can print anything really that would that you think would fit your style for this next diy i'm just picking out a simple printout these are from one of my books that i've purchased at michael's before and they have some pretty sentiments and positive quotes and i'm just looking for something that the color speaks to me and the quote speaks to me so I know that 
coral is really in this year it's the new color of 2019 so i'm looking also for something that picks up on that coral because i think i want to have some of that in my craft room as well with the very natural wood colors so here's something i do love this quote but i think i pre prefer this one here because it has the gold lettering and the coral accents in behind so i'm going to simply just rip my page um, as i was inspired by the look that i had found um, when i was out shopping at the home decor store and i just love the way that this looks really authentic and you know roughed up a little bit so do flip it over and rip on the back end because if it pulls off the color it will rip just the the white side now i'm just applying a nice even coat of mod podge on the back and then i'm just going to apply it directly to the canvas So I'm actually going to just scrunch up a little bit of that cellophane wrap and I'm going to use it to press down the edges here as you'll probably see that it does make for an easier smoothing out versus your fingers and you want to make sure there's no bubbles or ripples. So this is complete unless you want to remove and expose the wood on the sides which I totally forgot to do so here i am now removing the canvas i should have started this the other way around so if you do want to have the wood exposed on the sides maybe save the gluing for the end either way it works out so i'm just using an exacto knife and peeling back the entire canvas making sure i don't cut the inner part and then i removed all the staples with a little staple remover you do have to dig a little bit the wood is super soft so it's easy to kind of fidget around but i did hack up the wood a little bit this time so now i'm going to piece the pieces together again and you can definitely use wood glue to bring them back this one here was defective on the bottom i didn't notice until actually working with it and i'm just using a metal ruler and exact using an exacto knife here to just cut the canvas nice and straight and then re applying the back here um, so you have two options the canvas wood piece has either a flat modern kind of side or a classic frame totally up to you i like the flat so i'm just hot gluing my little white canvas right back onto the wood frame and this is a super simple diy and so so cute i actually really really love it and um, i'm excited to make some more i think i'm going to play around with some and try to get a glass frame or something that has enough of a glass piece that will fit on the back of these and i will love to do a diy with glass i just couldn't find the right size for this 8 by 10 frame so the white canvas it was this time Using one of the tiny little canvas boards from the Dollar Tree as well and some of the little wood chips that come with the wooden chess and checkers board so you can use the little black dots or I'm making a little dice I guess just six on the little canvas or I like the natural look I think this is just how it suited the rest of my pieces so I'm putting three little dots on one side and three on the other creating the face of a die now you can do four you can do five whatever you'd like and then I have these little stands from the Dollar Tree as well and I just put it like this on display and I think it looks very cute now for this here, you can buy these at Home Depot or Rona. They're super cheap, or sometimes you will even find them in the recycle bin. They always have free wood at our local stores, so definitely check yours out. I'm putting two together because they were uneven. This is like, um, I guess like a shingles or sh I'm not even sure exactly what, but you can buy these packs for super cheap and they come with a lot of wood. So if you like to play around with wood, it's definitely a great value. Find 
free wood as well at the back of the store typically. So I'm using the little towering blocks from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to put three in line using wood glue. Now you can use whatever glue you'd like. At this point you can even use regular white glue to adhere these together. You can use hot glue. I highly suggest wood glue. It uh, is longer lasting uh, versus a hot glue will kind of make it lumpy in between wood but it, if you can use it go for it and then I'm just applying these as legs or base legs to the bottom of this little tray. Now Dollar Tree also carries long boards similar to this idea so you can use that but I like the natural texture of this and I love having my diffuser in my craft room and then this little coral vase is from the Dollar Tree as well and then I use my little essential oils and I thought it just looked super cute sitting on here and also protects my table in case some water droplets or anything like that happen it's on the little tray and you can make this as large or as small as you'd like just changing the look of this little tin from the Dollar Tree I remove the handle and then I'm replacing it with twine and that's as simple as it gets. I just tied a little string of twine on one end, looped it through the other side, and then I can place my little essential oils in here as well, just for decor purposes. But I like the feel of the, the twine instead of the metal handle. These two boxes are from the Dollar Tree. They're a little bit on the smaller side, so I'm going to combine them together. Now they do have these little pull-out drawer tops and I'm going to save these two pieces of wood for future projects because you just never know something can come in handy for these. They're really nice little wood pieces. Taking wood glue on the flat side that has that little opening for the lid to slide in, I'm going to connect the boxes together. A super simple DIY, but I had seen some really adorable essential oils laid out in boxes and the boxes ran for about $12. So I thought this was a really nice budget friendly idea for what I was looking for. I put the little succulent in the box. Now there is a division down the middle. You can use wood filler if you'd like, but it didn't really bother me. So I just left it as is. For this next DIY, I had seen some sweet plant holders and I'm going to line up four of the tumbling tower blocks. Make sure that my planter, this ceramic planter is actually from the Dollar Tree as well. I absolutely love it and I wanted to spruce it up a little bit. So I'm using four of the pieces here and I'm using, I'm going to have them sitting on the narrow side rather than the flat. And I'll show you two options so that you know exactly what I'm referencing. You can sand off the glue with a little sander if you're going to stain these little pieces. I wanted to keep them very natural, so I kept them as is. However, if you want to stain them or paint them, make sure that the wood do, uh, glue doesn't get all over the wood and uh, you need to sand it off if you're going to be staining. If you're painting, don't worry about it but if you're stain if you are if you're painting don't worry if you're staining definitely don't want to have any glue residue on them because it won't let the stain penetrate the wood one of them is a little bit longer than the other so you'll see here uh, which makes I mean either option is is great I liked one over the other and I'll so to connect and make the little legs, you want to make sure you have a little lip on the top so that the planter is held in place. And I'm using these tiny little nails from the Dollar Tree. First, I'm going to hammer them in just to get started because it's hard to <laughs> secure this in place. And then I'm going to hammer it right into the side wall there. So this creates the first little leg. And then the second, sorry for all the shaking of the camera, but when I was hammering, I'm working on my craft table, it moves everything around. And then you want to make sure that the last leg is obviously nice and straight um, and in line with the other three. And then that's it. You've got your four and you've got your two options. So this one here is the vertical and I preferred it because it just seemed more symmetrical. 
versus the flat one and then you put your little planter right in and these guys are selling for like 9.99 at our local um home decor stores and i just didn't want to pay that kind of money so i made my own and i thought i'd share it with you guys i hope you guys enjoy all of these simple minimalistic pieces for your home if you're into uh the scandinavian look or the very simple minimalist look please let me know down below i did enjoy making these diys and sharing them with you and i look forward to sharing more with you very soon until next time everyone thank you so very much for watching and bye for now